Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's Castle Report. This is Friday, the third day of December in the year 2021. I'll be talking about the irreconcilable differences that seem to exist between members of this society right now and how those differences have led to actual casualties. The best example is the massacre of six people and injuring over 60 others in Waukesha, Wisconsin, just a couple of weeks ago, the beginning Uh, This story seems simple. A small town on the west side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, held its annual Christmas parade on Sunday night a couple of weeks ago. A man driving a red SUV, reportedly a career criminal named Daryl Brooks, plowed through the spectators and parade participants, apparently on purpose, killing six people at this point and injuring more than 60 When I say that Mr. Brooks was a career criminal, I mean that he had a record of arrest, incarceration, release, violence, rearrest, release, drug abuse, rearrest, and release stretching back 22 years to the age of 17. He led a life of crime and violence, including assault on domestic partners, rape, and impregnating a teenager along with many other violent crimes for 22 years. Not a single social safety net or single prosecutor stopped him until it was too late. I suggest that Mr. Brooks is the symbolic representative of one side of the cultural divide that confronts this country and the entire West. The the Christmas parade massacre was apparently no accident since Mr. Brooks has been charged with six counts of intentional murder. Many witnesses said he drove through numerous police and civilian efforts to stop him, including physical barriers, so he did it on purpose at the time. He had five open arrest warrants, including two felonies. Just two days before, he had been arrested for deliberately trying to run over a woman and her child. For that arrest, he was released on $1,000 bond posted by his mother. So for 10% or $100 to a bondsman, she got him released. A few few months ago, he was released on $500 bond or $50 to the bondsman from his previous violent felony charge. Court records show he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression. Growing up fatherless in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, he was admitted to a mental hospital at age 12. Attempted suicide numerous times in his early life after the death of his grandmother. He wrote a letter to a judge in 2007 detailing all this along with statements of the history of alcoholism and violent abuse in his family. A Christian woman once tried to steer him away from his life, but he always returned. He came back to it. He was an addict, a habitual domestic abuser prone to violence, threats, with weapons, he abandoned his firstborn son before the child was three months old. He got his first felony charge at age 17, 17 for a substantial battery after he raped and impregnated his child's mother. He pled guilty but served just 129 days in jail. His record goes on for 22 years. His rap sheet is more than 50 pages long. But I will stop there and fast forward to the days before the Waukesha Christmas Parade. Mr. Brooks was a part-time rapper who used the name Math Boy Fly as his rap handle. His rap and his social media posts were filled with violent hate messages directed at Jews and especially white people. He said World War III would start when people learned Hitler was right and did the world a favor by killing Jews. The New York Post investigated his social media accounts and his rap lyrics where he bragged again, according to the Post, that he was a terrorist and a killer in the city. He talked incessantly about violent acts toward white people, such as knocking them out and killing them. So to put a cap on this introduction of Daryl Brooks, he was a lifetime violent criminal with five outstanding arrest warrants, including violent felonies, and he was walking around free on $1,000 bond posted by his mother. When he decided to attack the Waukesha Parade with his vehicle killing six and injuring more than 60. In other words, he finally snapped and made good on all the threats he had been making for 22 years. Who fights on Daryl Brooks' side of the cultural civil war? 
who kept constantly releasing that man into a society of unprotected people because that person might bear some of the responsibility, the one who released him, that is. If a person had a rattlesnake in a cage, he released that snake into a private home where there were all kinds of people, including kids. The snake bit people and killed them. Who is responsible for their deaths? The snake is just being a snake, but the person who released the snake should know better or should accept the consequences. The snake is just a weapon in the hands of the one who released him out of some misguided sense of reform or justice or kindness. He does not want to imprison the snake, you see. So he turns him loose repeatedly until the snake finally kills. The man was elected. This man, this prosecutor, was elected and paid specifically to protect the public from such threats. But instead of protecting the innocent, he murders them. That man is Milwaukee County District Attorney John Chisholm, who was elected to the position in 2007 and spent the last 14 years of his career working for cash bail reform because he believes it criminalizes poverty. He says he wants to divert nonviolent offenders into alternate programs and away from the criminal justice system, but I point out that Daryl Brooks was a violent offender with a history of violent attacks and threats, the DA speaks about wanting to reduce the number of incarcerations in Milwaukee County. He describes himself on his website as, quote, a bold reformer with a track record of keeping our community safe, end quote. I wonder who Mr. Chisholm thinks he represents. Would it be the citizens of Milwaukee County who elected him and who pay his salary or the violent criminals who prey on them? Apparently, very unfortunately for the citizens of those communities, prosecutors around the country who consider themselves progressives are following his lead. He actually conducts classes for other prosecutors to teach them how to do it. The result of these classes and these progressive prosecutors has been a wave of murder, robbery, other violent crime across the country. Just take a look at Philadelphia, Boston. St. Louis and San Francisco, just to name a few, those are the ones on his website he lists as having similar programs. These cities are some of the most violent, crime-ridden cities in the country. Chicago holds out, I suppose. We always have Chicago because it already has almost 800 murders this year. So it doesn't need Mr. Chisholm's classes, I suppose. He is not and has not been aware of what he is doing, however, because he proudly admits it. In an interview with the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, he said, quote, is there going to be an individual I divert or I put into treatment program who's going to go out and kill somebody? You bet. Guaranteed. It's guaranteed to happen. It does not invalidate the overall approach, end quote. Well, Mr. Chisholm, that is where you are wrong, and if you will pardon the pun, dead wrong. Such a massacre does invalidate the process, as does the very premise of knowing you are releasing violent criminals among innocent people, I wonder if he will take his premise to the families of the victims. Maybe he could respond to those people in damages since he caused their death, the loss of their husbands, wives, children, brothers, sisters, the wrecking of their lives, their livelihoods was just a quite reasonable sacrifice so that career violent criminals like Daryl Brooks did not have to sit behind bars for their crimes. Mr. Chisholm funded at least in part by the George Soros organization, will find a way to justify You can be sure of that. He has media cover and help for his policies, after all. The media seem to be very good at covering up racial explanations when there clearly is one and inventing racial explanations when there clearly is none. That's all part of the war, I suppose, the disinformation, the racial politics where there is none. When your constant propaganda invents one, then just ignore it if it doesn't fit your political point of view. Just south of Milwaukee, in Kenosha, another Milwaukee suburb, the Kyle Rittenhouse trial concluded with a not guilty verdict just days before the Waukesha massacre. Was there a connection? Daryl Brooks seemed to think so, even though there was no racial angle in the Rittenhouse trial. The media went out of its way to invent one, thus fueling the anger and hatred of a man already on the edge. Mr. Rittenhouse had no violent criminal record, but all four of the people he was accused of killing or assaulting did. Three of them were felons, including one who was accused of raping male children. 
Mr. Brooks had more in common with these people than he did with Mr. Rittenhouse because he was a violent criminal and a dedicated racist who called for violence against the race he hated. One difference is that Mr. Brooks had a $1,000 bond available to him for just $100 to allow him to freely run over and kill innocent people. Mr. Rittenhouse had a $2 million bond, so he remained in jail pending trial, this war being waged against a rule-based society with the bond of similar ideas to hold it together is tearing those bonds apart. It is creating a whole class of people, such as Daryl Brooks and many like him in cities around the country who are destroying the rule of law and the social contract, which has always bound us together. Prosecutors, politicians, and media who wage this fight are usually not the casualties. The political class, the Soros-funded class, the billionaires, those educated in Marxism or whatever they choose to call it, are destroying the rules and the mechanisms designed to halt the slide. And society is sliding, sliding into an abyss that is no longer safe and functioning. The people being harmed are ordinary people. Those causing the harm are too often isolated from their deeds. They seem to view it as just theoretical. If you try to connect all this to the other things happening, such as executive overreach in the form of various mandates, virus treatments suppressed with only vaccines allowed at first, there seems to be no connection. My argument is that they are all part of the same Marxist assault on the West. The assault is taught to the best and the brightest. And on down the line, eventually these students work their way into leadership in an effort to undermine the rule of law and the orderly regulation of society. One might think that this massacre would get the attention of the, quote, reformers, but but here in my city of Memphis, Tennessee, the ACLU has already threatened the city with a lawsuit if it refuses to immediately reform its bail system. Reform its bail system, folks, that's progressive speak for release violent criminals without bail. The mayor has said he hopes to avoid lawlessness in this city, so we will see. The first tactic, if you want to deconstruct liberal democracy, is to convince people there is nothing worth saving, i.e., we in the West have only accomplished what we have through the labor of those we have oppressed. Secondly, Western society is plagued with white supremacy, for which there is no cure because of cultural hegemony. Western society is therefore illegitimate and undeserving of preservation. This rationale is straight from the Soviet era of the 20s and 30s and will not result in utopia, but it will result in chaos, poverty, misery for many people. Finally, folks, who determines the canon? The measuring rod, the standard for this society. We still have the ability to choose for now, so let's endeavor to do so wisely. At least that's the way I see it. Until next time, folks, this is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.